Hello, welcome back to the Spoonie Stitcher channel. I'm Shannon the Spoonie Stitcher. You're inside the stitchery. I'm so happy you're here today. That is our spokes pickle, the Spoonie Stitcher pickle, made by the lovely Tat Mama, Amanda, Tat Mama 73, and the Beg Brigade. Go check out her channel. I will link it down below. Let's talk about crochet kits. So you know these kits, they come in a box like this, some kind of picture, a little book, and then something on the back. But this picture is always misleading because it does not show you all 12 patterns in that you get inside the book. It shows you some of them, but not all of them. Not to mention, most of these don't show you this many on the back either. You don't know what you're buying. You know you're getting 12 patterns, probably, and that's it. But I hardly ever see anybody actually go through the books in these things. They just talk about their experience and how it was crocheting it. But what about the other patterns in the book? Or if they talk about it, they hold them up for like a second, like, oh, here's Daniel the lion, here's the owl. No. So because it is the holiday season and these make good gifts, I thought I would talk about the patterns that are actually in these. You're welcome, yeah. So, because it is the holiday season, I have four Christmas-related ones that I thought we would talk about first. I have the Nutcracker, the Nativity, Rudolph, and Frosty the Snowman. So I am going to put out a video, probably one of these per week, and I will tell you what are the patterns in the book? And we will talk about, you know, what part of the pattern, oh, it looks like they used felt here, stuff like that. We will talk about all the materials that you need that they also usually don't tell you in these kits. Sometimes they come with like little scraps of felt so you can make those two projects that they give you the materials for, but then you don't know what you need for the rest of them. And so I am going to do an in-depth look at the actual patterns that come in the books. So let's get started and let's look at one of the four Christmas books. Yes, all of these intros will be the same. So today's book is, drumroll, Frosty the Snowman. So let's see the 12 patterns that are in this book. So obviously one of the things we get to make is this adorable little train. Here is the table of contents, but we don't need that because we are about to see. Uh, in the beginning of all of these books, they have an introduction about this kit, what's included in your kit, and some abbreviations, how to read the instructions, which is good, um, what's inside your kit, and how, explaining it, how to put on plastic eyes, some techniques and whatnot. But let's get to the patterns, because that's what we care about, right? So pattern number one is Frosty, of course, and oh, is he cute. So he's got his little scarf, his top hat, his broom. Aw, and some of these are not yarn. If you look, his nose and his flower are made of felt. So there will be extra materials you might need. I'm not sure if it's included in the kit or not. Um... Let's take a quick peek back at materials. Yes, they gave you a little scraps of felt, probably to make Frosty and one other character. Oh, what's included? You can make Frosty and Karen with the materials included in your kit. So that's good to know. So yes, our first one is the man himself, or snow man, <laughs> Frosty. Now I'm not gonna show you the pattern obviously, but I love this, look. You can take your little piece of felt that they give you or your, your, your own, and this is your templates for what you need to cut out and how big they need to be. Isn't that great? I'm so glad they give you templates. That's so nice. So our next one is Karen. Oh, she is adorable. Look at her little embroidered mouth. That's super cute. Oh, I like her a lot. She really does look like the illustration from the cartoon, so that's really cute. Let's see. Pearl Cotton Embroidery Floss number eight and white pom-poms 
and a little bit of felt look like the only extra materials you might need. But again, Karen is supposed to be one of the ones that you can make with the kit, so maybe they have everything for you. But she's really cute, isn't she? Number three is Hocus Pocus, the magician's rabbit. How cute is he? Oh, you know what? So he would also make a really cute Easter bunny, would he not? Ideas, people. See, these kits can be used outside of the holiday they're meant for. Yeah, I'm telling you, that's a cute Easter bunny right there. So his only extras are felt and a little bit of embroidery floss, I think. Yep, looks like it. So I like that they lined his ears with felt here. That's really cute. I'm kind of glad that's not crochet. I actually think he looks more, more toy-like with the felt. I think that's really, really sweet. Aww. And again, we have templates for the inside of his ears, his eyes, and his nose. Now we've got Frosty's hat that the rabbit can fit inside. How cute is that idea? Oh, I love that. So you can make Frosty's hat all by itself and put your rabbit inside. How cute. The hat is just crochet. Only thing you need is a yarn needle, obviously, as in extra materials. <laughs> Such a cute idea. Now, a story would not be complete without a good villain. So, Professor Hinkle, also known as the magician. <laughs> so, I get serious snively whiplash vibes from this guy, and every single time I see the cartoon, I think the same thing. Uh, who remembers snively whiplash? Let me know in the comments. But yeah, I love it, but I totally want to turn him into snively whiplash. <laughs> Anyway, um, he just has a little bit of embroidery floss, a teeny bit of felt for his eyes, and that's it for extra materials. So everything else um, you already have to make him. So, oh, he's kind of adorable in an odd way. <laughs> and we do have um, some templates for his mouth and his eyes. Who do we have? The squirrel! Oh, he's cute! Aww. He's really cute. So it looks like just felt and embroidery floss. How did they do his paws? I'm going to have to look that up. Give me one second. Okay, so his paws are a little bit of work, but this is considered, you know, kind of intermediate. Um, yeah, there's a few fancy stitches and then you got to sew them properly. So... It's a little bit of work, but that is a really cool effect. Okay, so Santa, yay! I'll be honest, I thought Santa would be the last project in this book, but no, here he is, number seven. He is so cute. He looks like he could be part of a Hanna-Barbera cartoon as well. Although, who did Frosty the Snowman? Was it Hanna-Barbera? No. I don't think so. I have to look that up. Anyway, he looks very cartoony and very cute. And I like that they used um, like double crochet and treble crochet for his beard. Saves you time. Great idea. <laughs> and then, of course, Santa needs his reindeer. I don't know if I'd want to make eight. <laughs> but he is very cute. Um, I love the little jingle bells on his collar. Oh, I wish that came in the kit, but no, you got to find them yourself. But it does tell you that you need six millimeter ones, so that's good. Oh, I wish they came in the kit, though. They couldn't have stuck in five little bells for us. Oh, well, he's cute, huh? Now we have the twins. Oh, they're cute. And they do look just like their cartoon. Aw, I love them. They're adorable. Look at their sweaters. They're so cute and oversized. They're really, really cute. You know, if you just made their ears pointy and gave them a hat, they could be elves. I like to think outside the box, people. I don't like to use a kit just for a kit. I do like to see what else I could do with it. So that would be a really cute elf. Just saying. 
Here's a very lovely poinsettia. Aww. Beautiful. Looks like you need some eight millimeter yellow beads. Uh, this one doesn't say how many you need, but you can just count. Looks like there's about seven. That's pretty. You can also make a snowflake. Oh, I might make that for my tree. That's really gorgeous. So you just need white yarn, crochet hook, yarn needle, and liquid starch is optional in order to make it stiff. Very cool. And last but not least, you knew it was coming because it's on the front of the book, the train. Okay, this one probably takes a lot of work. Look how many pieces there are. Whew. But it would look really impressive. It really would. So they've even got a template for you for the train. That's really cool. So that was the Frosty book. What do you think? Is this a kit that you'd be interested in? Okay, so what did you think? Is that a kit worth buying? Let me know. Also, the link for Amazon or wherever I find it, Barnes & Noble, will be linked down below. I am not an affiliate as of yet, but I do want to make it easier for you all to find. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this kind of content, maybe consider subscribing and join our Yarn Zebra family. Don't forget there is a private Facebook group that you can also join, post stuff, see what I'm making before anybody else. Just saying. Remember, life happens, yarn helps, and Spoonies can stitch it up too. Goodbye!